on the eve of the NHS's 75th anniversary, we've got a special insight into its past, present and future from the people who make it what it is. ITV News was invited to spend a day with the staff at the Royal Preston Hospital in Lancashire. We heard from midwives, nurses, paramedics and doctors who still love what they do and are very proud of what the NHS stands for. But they're all struggling with the mounting pressure of record waiting lists and the crisis in social care. And the staff, along with the patients they care for, have shared with us their concerns for the future of the NHS. Our health correspondent Martin Stew has this special report. Six pounds, 13 ounces. All nice and normal back there. Albert is the latest of 330 babies born each month at the Royal Preston. Can't stop looking at him. <laughs> From cradle to grave, the NHS cares for us. But is the system itself now sick? It is worrying, but the the so the the, yeah, the so good. When you've yeah. actually got the staff there, they're amazing. It's just it just seems to be you can tell the some struggle. Cutbacks. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Ten years I've been a midwife. You never get bored of it. It's not just a job, it's a vocation. Lorraine has seen colleagues leave to earn more abroad. Or privately. It's understaffed, it's underfunded, there's lots more improvements that need to be made um, but it would be a great shame for if it ever went away um, and I don't think people quite realise that sometimes until it's too late. It is the worst I've ever known it in emergency nursing and emergency medicine. The emergency department was originally built for 20. It's a good day when we've got a space that we can put every patient to when we need to. Today there are 60. In the winter, it was 120. Are you confident all the patients that come through the door are getting the care that they should get? No, I'm not confident, and I'll be. That is, we do, we strive to give the best care. But you, could you argue that giving the best care in a waiting room or in a corridor potentially is that the best care? Sadly, not unusual to see staff members in tears at the end of the shift because they know they could have done better. Can we sustain it? Very difficult as the way it's going at the moment. The, the pressure increases year on year. Stephen smashed his elbow after falling off a ladder. It's coming here today and was through in a matter of minutes, like, you know, can't knock it, stuff are brilliant. Last year, wife Susan had a less positive experience. Herself, a retired nurse, she spent two days on a bed in a corridor at a different hospital. I never would have thought when I started nursing, eight, like 42 years ago, that I would ever be nursed in a corridor because there were no beds. It, it made me very sad and it made me glad that I had actually given it work. Whilst modern pressures strain the system. Hey Megan, you all right today? Yeah, yeah. How are we feeling? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Good. Modern drugs and equipment offer opportunities. So we're going to get you on the bed then and we're going to line you up using these cameras. And what Megan is coming to the end of her breast cancer treatment. Radiotherapy, once crudely calculated with rulers, is now millimetre precise thanks to infrared positioning, a treatment which would cost thousands privately. It has been amazing to know that this sort of failsafe is here for people like me because I just never planned at getting cancer at 28. You know, that's not something that I sort of budgeted for in my life. You think we should fight to keep it? Absolutely. Outside, an ambulance pulls up 23,000 times a year. Oh, we're doing all right. Yeah, good, thank you. Alan's been a paramedic. 22 years. Enjoy it? Love the job. Has it changed? Changed massively. We're getting a lot of mental health jobs. We're getting a lot of elderly patients because they're living longer. And people ring an ambulance now a lot more for the little things that common sense could probably sort out. This winter was the worst he's seen. Sat in the ambulance for 11 and a half hours with a patient in back waiting to get through the hospital door. It is getting better in some respect, but it's a long, long road and there's not one single answer that will sort these problems out. Resource One is now free to use. One of the biggest challenges is the hundreds of beds filled with patients waiting to be discharged. Hi Martin, nice to meet you. This used to be a private care home. This is Buttercup Unit. But has now been taken over by the hospital. We've yeah. got a really big social space here. Rather than spending 10 days in a ward, 64 patients can convalesce here. Because the environment's very different to being on the acute hospital bed. Yeah. They've improved to a point where we've actually got them home rather than going into long-term care. 100-year-old Rachel 
is heading home today. So when you were a child... Yeah, that's going back a bit. <laughs> yeah. You would have had to pay for your doctors? Yeah, yeah we had, you know what we had to pay, my mum said. If you had to, he asked the doctors to come out, it was six months. People couldn't afford it. This is kind of a guided tour, step by step, through the airway. Today, Dr Munavar treats patients for free with the latest technology. Three years ago, he led his team through COVID. For the first time in our careers, we saw a situation where we're going into work and we knew there was a real danger of one of us succumbing to the illness. So essentially the whole ward becomes red. If we did not have the NHS, I don't know how we would have coped with a pandemic like that. Honestly, I saw very fragmented care provided in some countries because they did not have a health system like the NHS. They were just not pulling together as a team. The hospital is still battling to catch up from pandemic postponements. Strikes haven't helped. Each day of action sees 500 appointments cancelled. All of this means the NHS is incredibly pressurised. But you know what? We are still coping and we will continue to cope. So you'll still be here another 25 years? Absolutely. The founding principles of the NHS being free at the points of care, being universal are what makes this country great. For every challenge, there's care and compassion. But staff here fear without real change. By the time Albert is 75, he may no longer be able to rely on the NHS the same way his parents have. Martin Stew, ITV News, Preston.